so in discussions with Tim and um, a little bit with Mark with our membership, I, they've let me know that each one of you is in, extremely intelligent and knows a lot about Rotary. So in that case, I don't need to be the expert. I'm going to get you all to work pretty hard this morning. So we're going to come up with some ideas and some thoughts together. Um, and then hopefully some actions at the end of it are some things that you can take back to your club to start to um, implement some of those things from today. That is my hope. So I thought we might start with why did we join Rotary? Oh, I'm, I'm a little bit forward there. So why did you join Rotary? And we'll start to do a bit of a brain session. Brain session, that's the, my tongue was in the way there. Uh, start to do a bit of a brain session of why you joined Rotary. And we all join for different reasons. And then I'm going to just write them up here. So there's no right or wrong answers. So make sure you've got your microphone open. And I'll start just to jot a few down, things down at you yell, as you yell at me. Um, get, get away from work. <laughs> that's, that's a read. I, I was asked. Ah. Always helpful when you're asked. Yep. Because my mate was in it. Sorry, I missed that one. Because my mate was in it. Ah. I've been, I've been a member two times. Um, the first time I joined because I was asked, and mm -hmm. I suppose the biggest consideration that, that I felt worried me at that time was a meeting once a week. Yeah. But, but I got used to that. And the second time I had a business um, and I realised that apart from my business, I... I was missing a bit of social life. I'd moved from one place to another. So the second time I joined um, was to meet some people. Mm -hmm. and, and really what happened in 12 months was terrific for me. Yeah, great. Hmm. What about some others? Why did you join Rotary? I was asked to become a guest speaker. Ah. And then I was asked to come back and report uh, on my adventure. And then they asked me to keep coming back. Ah, yeah. That'll teach them. <laughs> <laughs> You've regretted it ever since. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. uh, Alan, uh, Alan Harwood here. Uh, yes, Chris. thanks, Alan. I, uh, I was uh, in Apex in mm -hmm. Bensdale mm -hmm. uh, back in the uh, 70s. And I think Apex was a little bit of a forerunner to Rotary and uh, it, it whet my appetite in those younger days to when the time was right to uh, become a Rotarian. Oh. Now, I was impressed with what older Rotarians or older gentlemen were doing when I was a young Apexian yeah. and uh, right. we, we thought we were doing something for the community but uh, uh, it was mainly good fun and good fellowship. And uh, so I joined Rotary uh, through, uh, nobody asked me, I just uh, sent an email to a Rotary club and um, eventually got talking to them and uh, I joined that way. Ah, so there's obviously different reasons why people join, but what keeps you engaged? What keeps you coming back now? Let's have a couple of people who can give us some reasons why they keep coming back friendships fellowship making a difference yeah yeah service to community what else meeting a lot of people that you wouldn't otherwise meet My um, first impression when I first uh, went to a Rotary meeting and then uh, was asked back a week later and they had two great speakers and I, I learned so much at those two meetings and I really enjoyed the two meetings and that was the hook that uh, got me to come back. 
Ah, so yeah. So it's interesting, isn't it? So some of those way reasons we join Rotary, what keeps us engaged aren't necessarily the same things, is it? That's quite interesting. We've got in there engaged, making a different service to the community, learn so much, we enjoy it. The friendship and the fellowship uh, probably is a little bit in the reason why that also definitely um, ensures that we keep keep coming back. So I want to, I want you, I'm going to start to put you into some breakout rooms and they're random rooms. So who knows what, who you will end up with. So you'll have about four or five in your group. And I want you to start thinking in your group. I'll just share this screen with you. So if your Rotary Club was thriving, what would it look like? What would you notice? What would be different? And I'll also put those little pieces in the chat room and you can, um, in the chat box, which is down the bottom of the screen, you'll be able to see those in your breakout rooms. And um, you'll notice there that, you know, what's the difference between thriving and surviving? And perhaps, you know, I don't, I don't want to bang a drum about Rotary in a, in a, a space where we're in a few challenges, because I think we all, we all know that. Um, but I'm sure each one of you are here this morning, Saturday morning, because you want to see Rotary thrive. You want to see it, you know, reach out into the community, whether it be in your local community, you want to make a difference, you want to take action to create lasting change. So I'll give you 10 minutes in those rooms. Uh, so it's not a lot of time. So can you make sure that you stay on track? <laughs> it's easy to go, how are you? How are you doing? And before you know it, we haven't got any time left. Uh, so I'll give you a bit of a two minute warning that'll come up as a reminder while you're in there. But keep yourselves on track because if one person or if, you know, speaks for two minutes, it only leads two minutes, you know, a couple of minutes left for the other people. Has anybody got any questions before I send you out to those breakout rooms? So when you get the invitation, just accept it. You'll go into the breakout rooms. Nobody else in the other rooms will be able to hear you. Actually, I don't think it records Mark or Tim. That's the only thing. Hadn't thought of that before. So open up them now. I'm just going to, we might just, um, just looking here. I've done it automatically. Um, just, I might just have to rejig these rooms because it's looking like it's not entirely doing what I want it to do. Uh, okay. Oh, uh, now I know. <laughs> Into. Okay, that looks better. Okay, so I'll send you all now if you could accept that invitation. Yeah. <laughs> As we said. Everybody. We had a fight, about... none of us talked. Uh, just about. <laughs> Oh, is that I'm right? You, I'm glad you weren't in my breakout room. We could have had a fine. <laughs> <laughs> you save that family for matters to yourselves. <laughs> I thought it was funny listening to Jen and Charlie <laughs> when they forgot to mute. Yeah, they are. Oh, okay, in the same room. Okay. <laughs> Let's just do it a little bit. I just kept right out of it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do a, just a very brief <laughs> recap. So what were a couple of the things that were standing out for you that you would notice that would it look like that would be different if the, if your club was thriving? Paul's our spokesman. Oh, go Paul. Okay. Um, uh, if, if you like, Jane, I will. <laughs> but you took the notes. <laughs> I, I did. I did, because, because somebody needed to. Um, yeah, Chris, um, in our breakout room, we had uh, yeah, quite a few things come up. One of them with thriving clubs, there's lots to do, lots of projects, lots of activity. Um, uh -huh. That was one thing we had. Yeah. Um, 
and you know general fellowship and in, within within the club members and club. yep what about someone else one another group what did you have we we had uh, diversity uh, in in all, all aspects and also um, leadership mentoring uh, and people seeing the bigger picture mm. oh my typing is atrocious <laughs> oh in, I should was it just to see wasn't it seeing I'll go see, back yep. seeing bad, bad fingers I don't <laughs> Fat, fat fingers. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's always, it's always fat fingers. <laughs> no comment, Helen. What did another group what have? Did what did you have as a thriving? What did you notice? What would be different? Okay, we thought that um, stronger, um, stronger membership. When you've got a good membership, mm -hmm. uh, it's more fun, and and yeah. all aspects of the club function better. Um, one person mentioned that in a club with 35 members, uh, there was really nowhere to hide and, and everybody had a, had a job. Um, it's not easy for everybody to have 35 or 40 members. Um, mm. Maf Mafra's got 13 at the moment and, um, Striving. striving to improve on that. Yeah. We discussed fortnightly, fortnightly meetings. Um, there seems to be an upside for some clubs and <coughs> doesn't work for others. I, I reckon that's a bit of a 50-50 on that one. Okay. And then the last thing we thought was um, a good um, variety of members let the club function well socially. Um, I'm mindful of time, but has anybody in any of the other groups got something really great that they, oh, I'm sure be, I'm sure they're all really great, but that they'd love to share. Hello, can, can you hear me? Yep. Um, we sort of really didn't go over it, but my thought is comes from our present president. He saw a Rotary Club that had six members mm -hmm. and it did enormous projects. And to take out of the psyche that you have to have members that make $300 a, a week and so on and have a friends group, this, 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 this uh, Rotary Club had, I think, about a couple of hundred friends and they did enormous projects. So... They had, you know, it was overseas country, but it did very well. Wow. So thinking about the idea that you have to have a traditional member can create thriving of membership in the sense of outcome. Outcome, yeah. That's great, Rob. Thank you. Thank you all. There's some, some really good ideas there. Uh, thank you for participating. And we're about to share another screen. screen. I want you to take a look at this photo and just kind of put uh, your rotary goggles or your rotary lenses on. So when you look at this picture, we are in unprecedented times. What comes to mind? Opportunities. Okay, yeah, opportunities. Just unpack that a little bit. How do you see that? Well, with every change, you've, you can look at it as difficulties. Or you yeah. can say, well, this is a great opportunity. Um, let's run with something. And yeah. it's just a positive mindset, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Great. What do some others see? Thank you for that. Like so much of what oh, we do, it's you. about our, our, our attitude. You can, uh, you know, just, uh, we all see things differently, but uh, you, can look, you can see that in that photo, you can see the rain or you can see the sunshine. Yeah. And, uh, just, yeah. just look at the positive aspect of it. Yep. Of any yep. situation. You can see two different things. Depends which what you're focusing on. Yep. Thanks for that, John. What about someone and, else? Uh, I think it will change. Oh, I mean, you know, with the storm, it, it is yeah, well, going to yeah. improve. And like a, 
a situation that we're in now, at some stage, things will get better. Yeah. Um, and I suppose it's like John looking at the positive side of things, but as you know that a, a storm will be followed by nice weather, um, we will get through it. We've just yeah. got to look at the best way of getting through it. Yeah, yep, great. Thank you, Jan. It's also you about um, adapting. I Sorry. think, Teresa, if you go and then there was someone <laughs> okay. else. Um, it's about adapting to the changes as well um, and yeah. bringing people along with you. Um, yeah. if you. If you don't lead, you know, people don't, won't go anywhere. So yeah. it's, it's trying to have that um, positive spin on, on things and, and yeah. you, using, well, technology to, and anything to um, um, engage with people like we are yeah. doing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you, Teresa. Now there was somebody else about to say something too, I think. I just, it came here. I just want yeah. to summarize it. There's light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. What, you, yeah. what we are doing at this time is very difficult. If, if after all this pandemic, you learn a lot of things and you can move on. And there's yeah. light at the end of that. You could implement a hybrid model for meeting to cater for everybody instead of the traditional meeting. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, I like a tunnel and we can do things differently as well. Yeah, so we've got lots out of there. It's a new day, you know, uh, people the see clean. the paint and see the sunshine. Windows clean. <laughs> what was that? Windows. I said you should also keep your windows clean. <laughs> That's <not> true. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Which is your job, of course. <laughs> Clear the path. Chris, I think Libby Wilson wants to say something. Uh, so thank you for that. Go, Libby. Um, Chris, I, I think that uh, applying the windscreen wiper or the window cleaner, whatever it is, across the window that had uh, rain spatters or whatever on it, um, we need to reflect on ourselves and, and the way that our minds are fairly well. Most of us are, are, are of mature years and, and we have certain set ideas. And I think that we have to, con we should consciously try to clear our our thoughts about the way things are or should be or whatever and, and look through different lenses and listen to other people more openly. Because I think that, I think people generally tend to stick with their own ideas. So wiping the wind, you know, wiping the rain off the, off the brain and, um, and looking through different eyes, I think is really important. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that, Libby. Chris, just looking at what we're doing at present. Yes. This this is much more engaging and much more accessible to a lot more Rotarians than, True. so it's already brought about a really positive change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank I, you. I'm sure you're not Veronica. Is that right? <laughs> and I'm like, well, last time I looked, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Ted. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Um, I'm about to pop you into some breakout rooms just to kind of unpack that a little bit more to give you a bit more time. So I'd like you to look at, so what opportunities do we have in Rotary right now? What creative ideas? And, and then I, the really important piece of this as well is how do we start to take those opportunities? So have you got that? Any questions before I send you out? So what opportunities do you have, creative ideas, and then the how? So how do we start to take the opportunities? No questions. I shall open the breakout rooms and you might be in some different rooms this time. Should be getting your invitations now if you accept those. Here we go. Here they come. Fantastic. We were too busy. All right. <laughs> I think we're all back. Thank you for that. So what did you come up with? One thing that I said was I've been watching the uh, international convention breakout sessions and one that really took my fancy was the one about alumni. And I just thought that that was a good opportunity to perhaps attract people who have had a connection with Rotary, either through GSE or Student Exchange or RILO or some other group. Um, you know, maybe that they may have thought that that was really good and 
may come back to Rotary. Yeah, great. Or to Rotary. <laughs> what other opportunities did you come up with? Thanks for that, Bill. It seemed as though a number of people have picked up things like WhatsApp and, and some of those other messaging services that, as well as being on Zoom for meetings, <coughs> they've actually found different ways of getting in touch with their members and staying in touch with them, um, which has been really good. I liked the online Zoom wine tasting night. Mm. Oh, I reckon that sounded great. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. Something, just out of the, something out of the box, something a bit different. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, we don't want it out of a box, Chris. We want it out of a bubble. Oh, true. <laughs> That's true, Mary. <laughs> yeah. What other opportunities did you come up Chris. with? Yes, in our group, we, we talked about the um, connecting with the alumni as well. However, um, one of the things that, that the people on the peninsula or the groups on the southern part of the peninsula have, of course, is that especially when kids leave the, leave the local area to go to uni in town or to do training elsewhere, they frequently, very frequently, do not come back here permanently. Yeah. And so the, the concept of perhaps a passport type approach to um, those um, alumni um, and basically keep them in touch by Zoom meetings and so forth with expectations that, that at least they can feed in their ideas and give comments on what we're doing, even yeah. though, because, because I'd have to say that the NYSF people especially, who we send numerous um, number, <laughs> numbers, um, um, uh, do feel very connected to us when they do come back to speak to us yeah. and so forth. Because we, we can't can, can we can't draw from four sides. We've only got one 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 side to draw from. The rest of it's yeah. three. Mm. Can I what? touch on that for thirty seconds, Chris? Um, it's it's an interesting comment that you've just made, Libby, because the breakout session for convention on membership that Jesse Harmon took the other night. <laughs> there were two one they did talk about passport clubs which were looking at for East Gippsland eventually but they also talked about basically alumni based clubs and it's something that I want okay. to talk to Chris about because I think it's something that as you say it's a way that um certainly we know a lot of the GSE past GSE team members are wanting to become Rotarians, but there are, are reasons why they're unable to join their, shall I say, host um, yeah. club. Um, but I think that now that there are so many varieties of clubs that we can use, um, it is something that we can think quite seriously about. And yeah. I, I agree yeah. with you, Libby, it's an area we, we underuse. Okay, great. Thanks, Jan. <laughs> Anything else different that we've got yeah. around opportunities we have? Can I, can I say something? Hello. Of course you can, Rob. Yes. Um, the, uh, the change of all the Rotary clubs in basically becoming e-clubs effectively um, mm -hmm. because they're using the same concept or communication system that the e-club uses. The real nurturing of, first of all, the clubs to become a new type of thing, which is like a combo club, which is a combination of an E club, and when they land, when they're able to meet normally, right, they 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 uh, can have a combination of both. Your uh, customer base, if you like to call it, for for members, has now gone past all the all the geographical borders of the uh, of uh, that we've used to, all the way up to anywhere in the world. We can have a a member that has left. Uh, the organisation because they've moved, been moved to, to London, right? And let's get our mind out and say these ex members are all potential new members oh. again, and start yeah, looking true. outside our yeah. our borders because our e club has members outside traditional borders of nine eight two zero. Yeah, and so all of you can have yeah, members right. outside the borders as well. So your customer base has suddenly yeah. got bigger. And it's a matter of going yeah, out and saying, yeah. well, Fred, Fred's gone to Queensland. I might ask him to join. Touch, touch base with him. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. 
any other opportunities that are different as well and unusual? First, we uh, discussed the uh, possibility of corporate memberships um, and um, we see some possibilities there and there are some clubs already involved in that. So yeah. that's another little thing that we can all have a look at. Yeah. <coughs> yes, Jane? Um, Martin Van Elst from Bensdale, of course, is one of our very much younger um, members and his point was that uh, this has created opportunity to attract time for younger working people yeah. um, and that would normally not be able to um, attend in the traditional way that we do at meetings. And um, the other comment was that it's obviously, we're all um, able to see this, especially through the virtual convention, but we can attract a wider range of speakers, which perhaps is a little more stimulating than having to draw on a local group of speakers that um, we might have all heard over and over again that are specialties in their area, but um, we're hearing the same old, same old. So it's good. Yeah, yeah, great. Thank you for that. That's really good. I might go one more and then we'll just go to quickly to the how. Yeah, um, it's getting in contact with other clubs from around the world. So I've been talking with um, Preswick out in Scotland because I was um, visiting there last year um, and looking at what they've been doing and supporting. And they've been really supporting their local businesses and doing um, customer service awards virtually, or, you know, so then the the business can actually put a rotary sticker up on the window to say, you know, we've had these votes for us for, for yeah. still engaging with customers, even though we're, you know, locked down. Yeah. How, do, how do we engage? Yep. Chrissy, go back up to, uh, to your poor younger people. Yes. Yeah. Just change it to, I'm poor. to poor. Yeah. We're all poor. <laughs> I'm poor. <laughs> Oh, attract people. Okay. We'll, put it, we'll, put, we'll crawl across through there. We're all for time, Paul. So let's have a look at how. How do we just, I just want to spend a really brief couple of minutes on this. So how do we take these opportunities? What would, what would we need to do? What would need to shift? Uh, Chris, we had something come up in our uh, group with um, um, opportunities in the coming period with the R100 and the celebration of the centennial. Mm -hmm. We have now um, and a, a good opportunity for clubs to rethink um, an involvement or a project in their community to involve <coughs> their community and to celebrate Rotary um, Rotary's 100 years in Australia, uh, obviously producing good public image advertising for Rotary in the celebration. Yep, great. Thank you, Paul. What, yes. uh, how do we take up these opportunities? I'll go, Tim. Yes. I don't necessarily see your hands because I've got a smaller screen, so yell out at me. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, it's, I think it's really important to take your members with us. With yeah. You. Um, you know, come up with a plan about where they would like to see the club and what they'd like to be involved in. Um, there's nothing worse than going back to your club all fired up after one of these things and going, let's do this. Hey, we've got these yeah. great ideas. And suddenly you find that everyone just looks at you funny and that's the end of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. You've got <laughs> power in your club, or when I say power, I mean, you know, responsible leadership position, or you've got an opportunity to get these things on the table because I don't think what, what club wouldn't want to try all these things. Hopefully. Yep, that's great. Good, good insight. Thanks, Tim. One of the it things was really that, good um, to hear one of the clubs that I had in the breakout session that we were just in saying that they're already planning on looking at some strategic planning with some assistance from district and so on, which was really great to hear. It's a wonderful way of taking those opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of looking at where are we aiming? <laughs> Make sure we've got our. Yeah. Um, our arrows and what we're doing in the direction we want to go. And that's great. You know, exactly. Start yep. to do that. So yep. um, and another opportunity is to actually promote ourselves. And I was talking in an early session about even just using your rotary stickers, you know, on your car window, on your diary, on your phone, to actually promote what rotary is about. Mm. Yep. Come to tomorrow's PR session. 
<laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> All right. They're talking well, about telling a Rotary story. Yeah. Good. Chris, one of the things that um, one of the things that has worked for us in Lane Gatha mm -hmm. has been um, a situation where we've um, had a like a, a whole club involvement made up a list of possible prospects, and then uh, one of the guys had devised a nice letter, which was sort of a, a complimentary letter, and said that you know, uh, basically you're, you're a respected member of the community and your name has come up at the Rotary Club and we'd like to approach you um, shortly uh, with the view of inviting you to become a member of the mm. Rotary Club. And that seems to have been a system that has worked better for the Langatha Club uh, than, than when we went about it a different way. That letter seemed to be something for me that seemed to say to people, Rotary thinks you're a bit special. And they're yeah. coming to talk to yeah. you. And, and yeah. it's worked for us. Yeah. John, that's, John, that's really interesting. I've just got such a letter on my computer at the moment as a draft. Yeah, just oh, good. really interesting. Yes, yeah, so on my computer as a draft. <coughs> all right. Great. So thanks for sharing that. So if anybody Wait, wants to look at that, by all means, just say so and I'll send it when I get it done as well and send it out to any club. After I proofread it. I'll yeah. send it to you. Didn't you get it? Did you want to say <laughs> something, <laughs> Tim, before? Yeah, look, just very quickly, what you're describing <laughs> is the best practice to get new members. Frankston has used that over the year. Yeah. And a okay. club call in YAS, it's called the YAS model. <laughs> Really is just exactly what you're describing. If you like, I can make that available, Chris, to you. Yes, please. Yeah. I'd like it too. Yeah. Tim, thank you. I would. Well, it's a plan, and Chris can, um, yeah. Yep, I love it. Perfect. Yeah. There's also Warrigal. We've used that sort of idea as well, and it's been good. Yeah. yeah. Warrigal um, Club is actually, um, we've got a business card, um, which is it got all our, our details, contact details, but space to put our name that we can actually hand it to someone and say, please give me a call. And so we can actually, you know, um, have a coffee over at what Rotary does as right. a potential member. Thanks, Teresa. I want to give you now just a couple of minutes. You have, we haven't got long, we're about to wrap up. So uh, this is kind of where the rubber hits the road. Grab a piece of paper and a pen, just write down a couple of things that you've uh, learnt today, like what might be some next steps and exactly as Tim mentioned, like your next steps might be to have a small discussion with your leadership team at Rotary and then make it more broad, broad discussion. But what might be one or two things that you could start to do to make some of those things that you thought were helpful move forward in the right direction? So I'm just going to give you a couple of moments to do that on your own. Bensdale, uh, what Bensdale do might not work at Danny Nong, you get the picture. Uh, so I just want to give, we've actually one o'clock, but I want, I'm going to go two minutes over, Tim. I hope that's okay with everybody. I want one or two people just to share what's been a highlight for you or what's been a learning and helpful from today. Just the opportunity to uh, hear different people's views has been very good. Okay. Thank you. And my uh, my president's keen to investigate a corporate uh, management um, okay. membership, yeah. and um, Tim's going to give me a hand with that. And we've had a um, a bit of a chat about that, so that was good for me. Okay, great. Thanks, John. Two others. I think just the opportunity to be able to share. It's it's great. Really, really good. It's been tremendous. Okay. Thank you. Good. Mm. And the use of the letters, I think, is an excellent way to uh, uh, get out into the community and attract, you know, new members. Yeah. Yeah. So hearing what others are doing and, and learning yep. from that. Yeah. And Zoom, of course. Yeah. 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 Mm. Great. Thank you, Rod. All right. Chris, so Chris, can I just, just butt in there for a second too, can. please? Thank you. Um, first of all, Chris, th thank you. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yes, oh, membership problem. What membership problem? 
Mm-hmm. You, you guys have got the solutions. Um, you know, we've talked about opportunities. We've got different approaches of what we can take. Um, all, all we've got to do is go out and grasp those opportunities. And as, as Chris said, you know, it's up to us. Uh, we, we have the, the answers. As Holger has, um, President Holger has said, a planning meeting. Well, here we go. We're, we've started a planning meeting. Uh, as Chris said, we've got the online resources. I urge every one of you, get onto the Rotary Online Learning Centre. There are some fantastic tools in there. Uh, there is so much stuff, particularly about clubs, uh, diversity, membership, and all that sort of stuff. So go and use those resources. Um, select our members. We're talking about uh, our members uh, a lot today. You know, are we engaging in them? Does our clubs meet their expectations? And importantly, are we engaging them? And I think one of the big messages that Holger uh, has said, and we've touched on it in three or four spots today, there is no wrong age to be a Rotarian. So Chris, can I just say thank you today. This has been absolutely fantastic. I love the, uh, the interaction with everybody uh, and I really look forward to working with you uh, for the next uh, 12 months on this. Fantastic. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.